Yo, what's up y'all? Lad here. We finally took down Yan Long yesterday, and he finally came home. We went in blind, so it took us many tries, but we eventually did it. Let's go over the team that I used, and over the fight, to see what we should watch out for. So our team consists of mainly sword users, as we'll be taking advantage of Yan Long's sword weakness. We have Ulbrich for her physical DPS, Bior as well. Lynette is for buffing, which can be replaced with Glossom if you have him, as his skill of 20% defense and attack might prove to be a bit more useful than Lynette's buff. Elfin is there for his pomegranate ability, and his axe attacks, which the add-ons are weak to. Ophelia is for healing, uh, Ludai Awakened 1 that we pulled yesterday, is to deal as much damage as you can while we also had Fjord. Lars is again just go DPS, for breaking shields and obviously dealing damage. Finally, we have Therion for his Hellfire. So taking a look at our stats, you want to focus mainly on stacking as much physical defense as you can. So anything above 570 is what you want, as Yan Long will be hitting you pretty hard. And then for our accessories, typical SP regeneration and speed accessories, we're also using the newest armor set, which is Origin, focusing again on physical defense. So because I went in blind, we ended up completing the tier 1 challenge, which is under 40 turns. If you have Theo and Alfin, I would recommend bringing both of them, and equipping them both with an axe damaging skill, as the add-ons will be weak to axe, which are the crows. So enough talking, let's go to the battle. So Yan Long has 24 shields, is weak to sword, pole arms, and light. So his gimmick is the chiseled physique. It locks two weaknesses and gains another act on the next turn of attack by that weakness. It goes down in order. So the very first turn that he gets, he's gonna be weak to only sword and he counters polearm and light. And then turn two, he's going to be weak to polearm and he counters the rest, which are sword and light. Turn three, he's weak to light and he counters the rest. So anything red that you attack, he's gonna have another act on the next turn. And then once you break him, his very next turn or act, he's going to start the cycle all over again. So sword, pole arm, light. Yan Long, at the end of his turn, also dispels all status debuffs. So any sort of taunt, physical attack down, defense down, any of that, it gets all dispelled. The only time to use that is when your character is faster than him, someone like Viola. Uh, land a anti-attack, Kalora's attack before he goes. And then at 85% of health, he summons two crows. And then at 50%, he uses an ability called Fighting Physique. It's a permanent staff damage up and adds another turn, so he's gonna have three acts in one turn. Definitely watch out for that. But the good thing about that is his chiseled physique is no longer in play, so all of his weaknesses are fair play. So let's go over his abilities real quick. He has a broad bash, it's a AoE one hit staff attack that deals pretty heavy damage. 1200 to 1500 damage and again this is some of your defense is around 550 and above and then he has two ice attacks the first one is blossoming ice it's a two hit random target that does about 700 to 900 damage and it lowers the character's staff resistance and then he has the greater blossoming ice which is an aoe ice damage that deals about 800 to 1100 damage depending on your elemental defense and it inflicts an AoE staff resist down. And then his next attack, which does the most damage, is his Draconic Bash. It's a one hit staff attack that does about 2200 to 2500 damage. So definitely watch out for that, he's gonna hit you pretty hard. And then his next ability, which I don't like at all, is his Celestial Bash. It's a 3 to 5 hit random target staff attack that does about 1000 to 1400 damage. So for some reason, if he keeps on spamming this attack, his battle becomes a battle against RNG. And then his next attack is the Wild Rod Bash. It's a 3 hit random target that does 700 to 700 damage and then lastly his buff he has something called sharpened physique it's a attack and speed up for three turns let's go over our general idea so you spend the entirety of our turns one through eight we get him as close as you can to 85 percent and then you want to break and do as much damage as you can and get him down to almost half hp once you get him down to about half hp one of his turns is going to be activating that one self permanent buff you can take that turn as a relief turn and break as many shields as you can oh boy he was like literally one pixel away till we did not attack him jeez <laughs> yeah it's a seven hour stream we're just fighting young long boy So close, yet so goddamn far. Jeez. <laughs> and nowadays, people's jobs are changing. 
You should no longer be worried about the uh, hunter or the axe wielder. Be wary of the person who's holding on to the staff. Physical, yeah. I uh, definitely see that. Not a very nice physical clutter, too. <laughs> Twenty two hundred cheese. Also gonna suck because he's one of the arena champions that are useful, so I'm gonna want to farm it. Yeah, I think once I beat him, I don't think I'm gonna come back to him until a while. Until we get like really OP characters like uh And then Leon for staff damage. Oh yeah. I'm still waiting for uh Renu to come out as well too. But I'm assuming she's not going to come out until after we uh, go and save her with the bestower of... Is it power? Yeah, Rinu is going to be an amazing unit. Cave in. He sucks. Pretty three. These are some pretty. You want to make sure you take care of Wu, the bottom one first, and then the one on top, and then go for Yang Long. That's probably the most optimal way to go about this battle if your characters are not whale status or at A4. And then from there, it's all about praying to Arn Jesus that he does not do that celestial bash too many times on you, because that ability is not very fun. The bottom one only does physical damage, while the top one does magical damage and goes for heals. So let's go over the one on the bottom first. So Wu. He has an ability called Crow Flap. It's an AoE physical damage that does about 800 to 1200 damage to your whole entire party. And then he has a Crow Claw, which is one hit physical damage that does about 1000 to 1200 damage. And then onto Su, the upper bird. This is where Theo, if you haven't, might come in handy, as uh, Theo's esoteric care also gives you some wind resistance. And Su has the Wild Wind Wing Blow, which is a three hit wind attack that's random target. And you can expect about 800 to 900 damage with that. And then his next ability is the Crow Cover which he gives to Yan Long, which is a physical attack and crit up for 3 turns. And then finally he has a Crow Cure, which is a 3 turn region. Again, he gives that to Yan Long, and it regenerates his HP for about 5000. Okay, so with that being said, I feel like I should have gone for the birds first, focusing on the bottom one, which is Wu, that deals physical damage to you, and then the one on top, and then finally focusing on Yan Long. I went for a different approach. I decided to take out Yan Long first and then the crows and we ended up having to take an additional 20 turns after we defeated Yan Long to defeat the birds and because my party wasn't well equipped with the right skills which the birds are weak to axe and tomes it took us an additional 20 turns ultimately getting us all the way to 40 turns. With that being said we can definitely improve our team and our turn count Nice damage, jeez. 4,000 each. <laughs> 17 shields left. Yeah, I like that. The crow's out of here. 2, 3. Oh boy, not this attack. I really wanted my Fjord to not die, but... Jeez. Him as well. Sure, why not? Okay. 
So far, not too bad. So got Ulbrich in the back. Ah, oh, damn, still so far. Jeez. One. That's actually not bad. I believe. I believe. Yes! Yes! Oh yeah! <laughs> Noise! Alright. Now it's free. What are you crows gonna do? Oh jeez, that reminds me of how many turns I love. Oh man, we're- oh my god, turn 19? Jesus. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna be able to clear the, uh, turn 20 then. Man, that sucks. Exactly turn 40. If I don't kill him here, then I'm not participating or not participating in the cop. <laughs> Something tells me I might not be able to kill him here. Don't miss. Oh, thank god. Yay! Turn 40, turn 1! Alright, we did it! Jeez. Oh my god, this cup sucked. Man, those crows are so annoying. I would've... I would've, would've really liked if they had... We had killed the guy, and the crows disappeared. Then I would've definitely gotten tier 3. But I spent an additional 20 turns just to kill those damn birds, so... Tier 1, not too bad, I'll take it. Theo of Laddies. Cup was not very fun. All right, come on home again, long. But he better be hitting this freaking hard, man. I swear to God. Training couple Mr. Lance for the studies. Well, well, well. It only took us seven hours to get him. But you know what? Was it worth it? I don't know. Oh, he's salty about it. <laughs> Jeez, uh, maybe next time. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Inosuke from uh, Demon Slayer. Okay, well that was our attempt. We definitely could have done a little bit better. Um, going in blind, I like this battle. It was definitely much more difficult. Yanlong definitely blows Gertrude out of the water. But anyways, let me know if this helps you. And like always, take care of yourself. Light out.